The rollout of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine has been paused in the U.S., Europe and South Africa after reports of rare blood clotting in a very small number of people. Health authorities said they were halting the use of the shot while they investigate the cases and that they were doing this out of an abundance of caution. The AstraZeneca jab was also recently temporarily suspended in some countries after being linked to rare blood clots. Authorities are calling it a short pause. The U.S.'s Johnson & Johnson vaccine has hit the same stumbling block as the U.K.'s AstraZeneca jab did last month, a likely link to a rare and deadly blood clot. Use of Johnson & Johnson's Janssen vaccine has now been halted across the U.S., with health authorities investigating six incidents of clotting in younger women, one of them fatal. The U.S. developed vaccine uses an adenovirus to trigger immunity the same mechanism as the AstraZeneca vaccine. Janssen accounts for roughly 5% of vaccines delivered so far in the U.S. So I had a J&J &J vaccine appointment today, and uh, I saw the news about it getting kind of revoked. So I called and I asked, and they said, you can get the Pfizer vaccine instead. My wife just had a J&J vaccine uh, in like three days ago. And so, you know, I, I'm just hoping that uh, it, nothing that it's going to happen to her or, you know, anybody who got the j and This is a setback to Europe, too. Johnson & Johnson announced it will delay its rollout on the continent. The company had already started processing an order from the EU of 200 million doses. I imagine there will be repercussions as we're waiting for millions of doses. But this means the controls are working. If we need to be cautious, we need to be cautious. The Janssen jab has been partially rolled out in Africa, where a majority of countries don't have enough vaccines even for their own health care workers. The African Union signed a deal for 220 million doses this year. But U.S. authorities remain hopeful. They're saying it could only be a matter of days before the rollout resumes. Let's get some more perspective on this story with Mohamed Munir. He's a virologist at Lancaster University in the UK. Mohamed, it's good to have you back on DW. Do you think that it was the Thanks. right decision to pause the Johnson & Johnson vaccine rollout? Uh, well, um, so, I mean, if we look on to the number of vaccines that have been given in the United States, um, as uh, the report indicated, the majority of them being uh, by Pfizer and Moderna, and a very small proportion, 5 percent, being through Johnson & Johnson. And this uh, blood clotting concern has not been uh, reported in the Pfizer and Moderna vaccine that have been rolled out for a large scale. So this means that there is some serious concerns that need to be considered before continuing the rollout. So, and then that is the medical procedure where any concerns are raised on a large-scale uh, implication, pause the trial, get a time enough to validate the data, and if there is any link, then that is something that needs to be considered. If no, then we resume. Okay, so authorities are taking every precaution here, but what do you think the delay of this rollout will mean for vaccination efforts uh, here in Europe, where it's also been paused? Um, I think it is certainly a setback, uh, because uh, not only in the European Union, but also, as you know, in the South Africa, they also suspended the rollout of this vaccine. And this vaccine has a certain unique characteristics. One is that it's a single shot, probably the only single shot vaccine that had been approved, can be stored at refrigerated temperature. And many of the countries were considering using the Johnson Johnson as alternative to AstraZeneca. And Johnson Johnson was probably one of the few vaccines that have a proven uh, safety profile against South African variant, which is one of the most uh, uh, transmissible pathogenic and can escape the immunity. And above all, uh, my major concern is that Johnson Johnson has been a big part of the COVAX facility for the European, uh, for, for the low and middle income countries. So they have committed around 500 million doses for COVAX. And if uh, this pause will continue or would be a setback for this vaccine, certainly would be um, a, a big damage to the vaccine rollout, not only in the developed nation, but also in the developing nations. You mentioned that the AstraZeneca, as you said, has also been paused in several countries. What do you think this means for vaccines like Sputnik and some of the vaccines from China? Do you think that they are the next ones which could, that could also be stopped because they all belong to the same group of viral vector vaccines, the same type? 
Absolutely. So, I mean, this is very important because if this link is uh, associated with the Johnson Johnson regarding the blood clot and the same as with the AstraZeneca, that means it is more associated with the technology that is being used, not because of the vaccine. So, this also means the Sputnik V or the Sinopharm from the China and from the Russia, respectively. These are the ones that are using the same technology. Those um, also need to be considered under the same parameter. Problem is that most of those vaccines, wherever those have been deployed, we don't really have much data on to Sputnik V or the Sinopharm. So if that data is transparently uh, digged into, uh, I think that's going to give more, much more clues that it is more associated with the technology or it is um, overall the vaccine. We'll have to leave it there. Mohamed Munir, a virologist at uh, Lancaster University, thank you so much for your insights. Thanks for having me.